tricky it can be to get these really fine lines especially when you're painting on a, a background where the, the paint's not quite dry so painting wet on wet and trying to get the um, the density and the vibrancy of that paint can be a little bit difficult so I'm going to show you how I do that um, and we're going to be using well these are the three brushes that I would traditionally use to uh, to paint um, fine lines. We have the rigger brushes, there's two rigger brushes there, come in different sizes, and we have also the ivory dagger, um, that's also very good. And what we're gonna try and achieve here is to put on thin lines, but we want them to be strong. They're gonna sit on a darker, wet background, but we want them to have a certain amount of punch to them. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Um, these brushes, by the way, all available from my website, shopmicrojamesmith.com. Let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm not going to fill in the whole area. I'm just gonna work on a little bit just to show you how to do it. Now, um, these are the colors that we're gonna be using. We have, I might actually need to add to these, but let's do the darker areas first. And to do those, we're gonna, we've got sap green, um, burnt umber, ivory black, Windsor yellow, and titanium white. We also have here some liquid original. Um, now this is what we're going to use to do almost like a glaze really um, now what we have to do is just rough in the darker areas we can do that with pretty much any brush but you're going to want to use something a little bit bigger than the, either the riggers or the um, ivory dagger you can use something like the series 3 size 3 8 this is the tree and texture brush or indeed the series 7 size 8 so what we're going to do is using the liquid and the ivory black, we're gonna get a, just put a glaze together. So using the darks, and then just rough in some of the darker areas that we're gonna put in. So bearing in mind, we want it to look something similar, as I've said, to this area here. You can see here. I think it's also worth saying that leaving some of the areas of uh, uh, white showing. See some of these where well, you've got the brush marks here, you can actually see a little bit of the um, white panel beneath. That's absolutely fine as well. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of detailing. Just some of these darker bits. We can increase the um, almost the, the darkness or the density of those darker areas by actually using a little bit less liquid. So have more of a, a colour balance in there rather than the liquid. And as you can see, that darkens it slightly. So once you've got your darker tones in there, then you can go ahead and start adding the highlights. Okay, so let's put that brush to one side. We're now going to do is add those lighter areas. Now one of the things I will say, there are many ways of getting nice sharp lines by using a rigger brush and now it depends on the surface that we're painting on as to what method I tend to use. Now if, it, if we're going to paint on a, a light surface, so say for example we wanted to put some uh, branches over a, a white sky or a very light blue sky, then we can thin the paint down so it almost has that ink consistency and that, that will work quite well. But if you're painting on a darker background and you really want it to be strong, then you need a slightly different technique, and I'll show you that now. Okay, so let's mix up some lighter paint. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with the yellow, 
and some of the sap green. Okay, so what we have there now is quite a light green. Holding that up, I think what I'm going to do is darken it slightly because we're going to be doing this in layers. We're going to put the darker layers in and then we're going to build up on the lighter layers. Okay, so we're going to more of a mid green, more of a mid olive green. Okay, so there we have our paint. Now, nothing's been added to that. No thinner, no medium, no liquid, nothing has been added. That is as is. Now what we're going to do is start to put some of these lighter parts in. And if you look at the panel here, what I'm doing is I'm flattening. In fact, it probably helps to have more paint on the on the in the mix there, so it's more of a more of a thick bed of paint because we need to pick up quite a lot of paint on the brush. Okay, so now we have that. As you can see, that's quite a a thick bed. Now, what I'm going to do is flatten the brush out. So I'm dragging back. I then turn the brush over 90 degrees. Over 90 degrees, brush back, over 90 degrees and brush back. And what that gives you is almost a blade effect. So we have a sharp, it's sharp on that side and flat on that side. Almost like a palette knife, if you imagine your palette knife is flat and then you turn it on its side and it's sharp and what we're going to do is we're going to use almost like uh, that pa almost that palette knife to draw a line whereas if we did it like that we'd get a long mark like this can you see it gives us a, a fat line whereas if we used the corner it gives us a thin line that's that's the effects that we're trying to get with this brush so we've got that, we've flattened it out, you can probably see better here. So that's the flat side, that's the sharp side. And I'm going to use that sharp side to draw the lines. And I'm using just the very tip of the brush, in fact, just to make it a bit easier for you to see. Let me add a bit more yellow and white. tiniest little blades of grass and I'm not doing long strokes so I'm not doing a stroke that's like that where it's can you see it's it, a it's a lot fatter and it's broken because we've dragged across the surface we've used up all of the paint on there we're not using the edge the corner or the very tip of the brush we're tending to use then the whole brush and you're losing your shape straight away. So what you need to do to maintain that shape is <clears throat> almost you're doing like a, a small little dot. So I'm using that tip and I'm touching the tip against it and then I'm almost doing a touch, lift, touch, lift. So you're putting a point on and then lifting, kind of lifting, doing in dots rather than one straight line. And what that does is it just it, it stops the shape of the brush from being uh, altered and allows us to keep that sharpness. So as you can see, it's a uh, hard bit. I mean, the, the lines are very small. Now, if I was to drag across, um, you can do it with the, the thinner paint, see? You can do it, but you then start to get a broken line as you're dragging. So the best thing is is to touch the panel, move, and then touch it again with that sharp edge. So get the sharp edge. And you can do one long line like that just in stages. So I'm doing this in almost dots. just because the grass is long. I mean, this here would be a slightly shorter area of grass, but if you wanted it to be longer, then you can do that. You just you lengthen those blades. Um, now, it looks as if I'm dragging across the surface, but I'm not. I'm, I'm touching it, pulling slightly, lifting a bit, and then so it's more of a 
it's more of a as if you're connecting the dots so of course when you do this what you don't want to do so you're running along the line you've got the sharp edge you don't want to change direction this way because can you see that's now thickened the paint or it's thickened the brush mark so also the paints that I'm putting on here is fairly thick we're trying to get a lot on the brush so these uh, these little lines that I'm putting on are really small they are thinner than a millimeter they're probably a something like a third of a millimeter wide they're ever so small and putting lots of them close together also one of the things that I would recommend is that you rest your hand on the panel you rest your knuckle on the panel as I'm doing here and that keeps your hand nice and steady now one of the things you do have to do if you're leaning against the panel is you need to be working from left to right because otherwise if you're moving in this direction of course you're going to be smudging the paint that you've already put on so as you can see that's already starting to look like grass and then from here onwards really you're, you're you're putting these small little brush marks in. You are um, trying to keep them a consistent thickness, altering the uh, direction of those blades of grass just slightly so it's not all identical. The paint that is going on the palette is it's got an a, um, impasto effect to it, so it's not smooth. This has texture, so once that's dry, it would almost feel like sandpaper. It's, it's uh, an impasto, and that is what is allowing us to get this nice colour over the top of the darker colour. Now, if we, if we, if we were uh, thinning the paint down and using a liquid or a thinner, you wouldn't have anywhere near the same sort of covering power as you do with... Um, the thicker paint. So I'll just persevere with this just a, for a little bit and then I'll adjust the colour and we'll put some highlights in there. Okay, so that's how I would do it with a rigger brush. Now of course you can, as we mentioned, use the dagger brush um, and it's basically the same principle you're able to do the same type of effect with this because it's already in the shape of a blade um, it comes that way so it's sharp and then flat um, and you can pick the paint up in very much the same way and then use that point of the brush to do very much the same type of brush stroke I think one of the benefits, it's, it's a bit more paint, I think one of the benefits to the rigger brush is it gives you the chance to have a much thinner line, I would say, or not much thinner line, but a slightly thinner line to the um, dagger brush. This is very good for perhaps areas of grass that are a little bit closer, so where they can be a little bit thicker. But you still need a steady hand with it. But you're going to also do pretty much the same type of brush stroke. You're, you're using the brush in the same way that you do the rigger brush. I personally prefer using the rigger brush. There is definitely a time and a place for the dagger brush. I find the rigger brush just gives me a little bit more control over the width of the blades of grass. It's just easier to keep them skinny. That said, I would recommend if you do struggle with your technique with the rigger brush, move over to the dagger brush. Give that a try because 
in some ways it is it is easier if uh, you do struggle getting the, the correct shape with your with the brush. So I'm just adding a little bit of white now. It's all about layers. So now we've put on the mid green layer, we're going to go in with a lighter green. Plenty of paint on that brush. up a bit with some brown and we'll be pretty much where I would like to be so color wise and the amount of detail so that is pretty much how I use the rigger brush to do grass and to do any straight line now I suppose there are times where you want your um, little lines to be flat. You don't want that impasto effect. So for example, things that tend to be a bit further back, that's where you would use a thinner to, um, uh, to thin that down and, and uh, lose that impasto. But certainly areas at the front, like some of the grass, having the impasto effect I think works rather well because it does give you the sharpness and the 3D uh, look. Um, so. You know, I recommend that you give that a try. Um, it is all about the paint consistency. And bearing in mind, we were painting over wet paint there. That um, area behind, that liquid area, was, was although there's a certain amount of the blocking showing through, um, it was a wet area. Um, so that's what I would recommend you do. Get the consistency of the paint correct, which basically you know you don't need to add anything you could if you wanted to once it starts to dry a little bit add a small amount of liquid or thinner but you still need to keep that you still needs to be able to be thick enough to sit well on the brush um, so it needs to be almost like it would be as it's coming out of the tube um, but yeah so get the brush the right shape of the brush the right consistency of paint and you should be good to go keep your hand steady keep it against the panel try to um, do almost blades do the blades as dots if you can't get a uh, get a, a straight line um, pretty much everything here was done with a dot and that's why it has that impasto effect and uh, that should see you good from now on uh, with doing grass so give that a try um, let me know in the uh, comments below how you get on. I'm interested to read all of those. Um, the brushes are in the pop-up banner here. You can buy them there, or once again, there's a link in the description. Um, most of you might know that uh, I have a um, online painting school, so that also the address for that is also down below. Um, also, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, Pinterest. Once again, down below, everything's down below, and um, I'll see you in the next video. So take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.